Um, I'm not going to tell you it's big, but it's not small. Welcome to Petra Lounge. Presenting the 2020 Bugatti Chiron. Now, this car just came to us a couple of weeks ago and we're familiar with it, we've seen it before, but you know, this is the first time it's really been in the building for an extended visit. And every time you look at it, you're gonna see something new. There's a new cutout or a new little element and it's just, crazy there's carbon fiber everywhere you look there's 10 radiators so every time you're looking at the car you see a new radiator somewhere you didn't notice before um, these big brakes on the front they're huge i i swear they're the biggest brakes i've seen on any car and i mean you can look at it and you're like oh it fills the wheel and you know it's like every other brake and everyone that has seen this car in person has commented on my god how big are those brakes and how big are those calipers and I'm sure they put these on here because the top speed of the car is so high and you really want to slow this car down quickly once you get there. Um, but I, I just can't impress upon you how impossibly large they are. I wish I had something to put beside this for scale just to show you like it's this big thing, um, just monstrous. And again, we're seeing this more and more with these hyper cars, you know, you have a really open wheel where these you know really thin spokes, but it's really great the way it just shows off this this caliper here. Now, I, again, I'm looking at this car and I'm seeing stuff just right now standing here. I'm seeing the same kind of ducting here that you find on the uh, 458 Speciale, and it's it's to bring air around here and smooth it around the tire for aerodynamic reasons and to keep the car stable at high speeds. And it's a little more hidden in this car than it is on some of the others that I've seen. But the active arrow that you would expect to find on this car isn't really present here. Um, you do have a little bit of active arrow. You've got the rear spoiler, which we'll show and demonstrate later. Um, but on the front, you start looking and it's pretty static. It's just this. Um, but it is really crazy. It's really dramatic and something I love about it, this is one of the first Bugatti front ends that I really truly love. Um, this big grille on the front, in my opinion, I, I know why they do it, it's a Bugatti thing, um, but sometimes it's kind of clunky. Um, I know like on the EB110, it was really small. They tried to diminish it, but show you like, hey, you know, we're hearkening back to the old Bugattis. But to me, it was always like kind of an afterthought or it just didn't fit with the rest of the car. And even on the uh, Veyron, I felt like it just felt kind of tacked on. It didn't feel like it fit the character of the car. But this one, for whatever reason, really works for me. It's just really beautiful, it's a really bold, powerful statement, and it works here, it really looks fantastic. Um, looking at the, uh, I keep wanting to say engine bay, it's not the engine bay, it is the luggage compartment here. There's a few curiosities, one of which is specific to the US market here. You find this strange metal divider inside the luggage compartment on the US car. Uh, this is a US only thing, and the only reason it's there is the US has a regulation that if a child can get into the trunk and it and be shut inside, there has to be an emergency release that glows in the dark that you pull and it'll let you get out of the trunk. Uh, Bugatti didn't want to do that. They didn't want to engineer that special little thing just for the US market and I get it. This is a low volume car. It's really hard to integrate that after the fact. And so this is literally the bare minimum space that you can fit and not have to put one of those releases inside the trunk. I guess they feel like this small, there's no child that could conceivably fit in here and be shut in the trunk and need to be let out. So that's the whole reason for this divider. So the, the numbers here for the performance are truly kind of otherworldly. It's zero to 60 in about 2.4 seconds. You're gonna see 120 miles an hour in about 6.5 seconds. And then you're gonna get to 186 miles an hour 
in about 13 and a half seconds. It is blisteringly fast, but the thing that really amazes me even more than that is your top speed of 260 miles an hour, you're gonna to get to in about 32 and a half seconds. It is the fastest top speed car that you're gonna find, period, that is licensable for any public street. It is just amazing. The performance is amazing. It's what everybody wants to talk about, but really myself, I feel like the car is so much more than just the performance numbers. I, I wanna say the performance is almost inconsequential because this is the kind of car that 30 years from now, even if these numbers, which I can't imagine that they would be, but let's just say that the numbers are very pedestrian because that's happened now. A lot of performance numbers from the 60s and the 70s, you look at them today and you're like, oh, that really isn't so fast. Everything does that. This car will still be a gorgeous car. It is still going to be a work of art and it's still going to be amazing. And, and then just this monstrous rear end here. There's a lot of carbon fiber. There's a lot of little bits. Um, there's even a little piece on the tail light here that actually reads Bugatti when they're lit up. Not that anyone's ever really gonna see it. And maybe it's only the kind of guy like me that actually notices like, oh, look at the little detail here. But all of this lights up. This strip back here is lit up. Um, and then you get down and you start looking at the diffuser down here. And this is something I find really, really interesting on this car because this has something I haven't seen on literally any other road going vehicle, period. Modern, old, doesn't matter. Um, we're familiar with these big Venturi tunnels. A lot of supercars have these now to create downforce. But you would think this is the only exhaust on this car, but there's actually an extra exhaust up under here and you almost wouldn't notice it and it's cut into the Venturi tunnel. And you might look at that and go, well, I don't understand why they did that. What was the purpose of that? This is actually a blown diffuser. So they use the exhaust of this car to also generate downforce. They really wanted this to be a luxury car first. It just happens to be blisteringly fast and come in a sports car package. You, you do start to notice it. You see the luxury. You have the double paned windows. You have a really comfortable seat. Uh, you could be fooled into thinking this is a GT car, which I guess it kind of is. And there's all kinds of little pockets for stuff. Um, this pocket is kind of decorative and it says 110 years of Bugatti. It celebrates their 110th anniversary, but there's, also a little pocket up here to put small stuff. There are nice big pockets down here that will hold all manner of stuff. They're deep, they're huge. They're also lighted, which is a really nice touch. And then you have another fold out pocket here that's also lighted and it's big. You could put quite a bit in here, far more than most cars of this caliber. I mean, there's way more storage space in here for just the little things that you would want in day-to-day -day life than there is in, say, a McLaren 720. The glove box is a reasonable size. So many times you open a glove box in this kind of car and it's like, oh, I could put my sunglasses in there and that's it. Um, I'm not gonna tell you it's big, but it's not small. Um, there's no center display panel, which is really common these days. Um, you see it in everything and Bugatti definitively didn't wanna put one of those in the car. And the reasoning behind that was they felt like no matter how fancy the screen was, no matter how advanced it was, no matter what they did, um, it was always going to look outdated in five or 10 years. And, and that is true. All of these fancy cars, when they really go all out on the infotainment stuff and the electronic enhancements, you notice it about five, 10 years out, you start going, huh, I guess this was the best you could do in 2005 or the best you could do in 2010. Or, oh yeah, look, hey, you know, 2015 called. Bugatti wanted this car to always feel timeless, to always be a special luxury car and always be beautiful and not be so much a product of its time. So all of the displays are kind of confined to these small screens here um, next to the speedometer. There are a few drawbacks to that. The screens are really tiny. The backup camera in particular, 
Um, cars like this, you really want a good backup camera, and I've gotten a little spoiled with some of the new stuff. You, you stop worrying about what you can't see when you're backing up the car, maneuvering it around, because the cameras allow you to see literally everything, and many of them allow you to see where the car fits in the space and everything that's around it. Um, not so much in this one, and it really revolves around the fact that the display is so small, it's hard to convey a lot of information. So, you know, when you're moving this car around, it's a little more difficult than, say, you know, a McLaren 720. You do have to kind of use your mirrors more, maybe even have a spotter. You do have to think a little bit. So um, there are drawbacks to that, but I'm sure in 10 years, I'll be talking about this and going, you know what, it's really nice that they didn't do all of the crazy stuff. And we are going to talk about all the little things that are here in the cabin, because there's some really unique things, like this C-shaped light here, which is apparently the largest continuous panel of light in any car found anywhere in the world. And it is really dramatic, and it's really beautiful. Uh, you can configure it where it's on the whole time that you drive the car, and you can change the brightness. Um, you can make it as bright as it is now, or you can make it fade. Uh, right now, it's in the mode where if you open the doors, it comes on, and then it'll go off a short time after you shut the doors or you start the car. Um, I really like this effect in particular. It's a little distracting when you're driving it, um, so I wouldn't want it on all the time. But it's beautiful when you first get in the car, and it really, really lights up the cabin. It's a, and it's a nice diffuse overall light. Um, I mean, I feel like we could actually just use that light to shoot the video. Um, it's, it's really, it's really crazy. So down here in the floorboard, kind of hidden away, um, is this little thing that says Chiron, and there's a little key slot next to it. And, and you could easily overlook this. It would be really simple to do. What it is, is this is the actual speed key for the car. And it is a nice, heavy little piece of metal. It's got a switchblade key. And I haven't actually done this before, but if you want to put this car in top speed mode, you put this key in here and you turn it. And the car goes through all of its checks to enable top speed mode, which takes the car from a top speed of 240 miles an hour all the way to 260 miles an hour. Interestingly, once you get over 37 miles an hour, if you so much as touch the brakes at that point, it ends your top speed run. You have to start all over again. You have to stop the car. You have to put the key back in. You have to turn it again. It has to do all of its checks to make sure that the car is capable of a top speed run. And then you can try again. I want to thank you for joining us today while we go through the 2020 Bugatti Chiron. I also want to give thanks to the owner of this car. This is a very special car for him. We're really proud to have it in our building. Uh, I'm really thankful that he brought it to us. He enjoys this car a lot. We haven't seen it in two years. Um, it's a delight to be around. And, you know, I, I can't express how thankful I am that he just, he let us shoot this video with his car that we were able to do this today to show you what really makes this car special. I know everybody wants to see this car. They wanna know what it's about. I know you're looking around. I know you see all this other stuff in the background and you're thinking, wait a minute, I wanna know more about that. I, I, but, but what about this thing? Please hit like and subscribe because we're gonna get around to it, I promise. You're gonna see it eventually. We're gonna to get to it. So until next time.